We've already seen how CSS can be applied to elements like paragraphs and ordered lists, but by no means are we restricted to just those two approaches. This code contains a number of selector flavors. This first one is an example of a custom selector called Highlight. When I prefix the selector name with a dot, I tell browsers to be on the lookout for any matching classes down in the HTML. The hash special element will be applied through the id equals attribute. We've already seen how associating a style with an HTML element like p works, but the shape of the background coloring applied to the ul tags and the border color of the text input field are controlled by these two styles. Now, down here in the HTML, we see how the welcome to my website title id equals attribute takes our special style. The P tag for the second piece of the text is given the P style and the third bullet point has the highlight class attribute. So it'll get both a yellow background and that background will be square. Finally, the input type equals text field will get a gray border. If we load the page and take a look, we'll see that it's all good, just what the doctor ordered. There's another kind of class we'll call a pseudo class. They're called pseudo since these aren't exactly traditional classes, but class controls. I'm sure you've already seen pseudo classes in action on web pages you visited. Links or page elements will change their appearances when different actions are occurring around them. For instance, as you can see from this CSS code, there are definitions for normal, hover, focus, and active states. In this code, they're all applied to the click me button text in the HTML. Let's see how it'll work. The normal at rest appearance of a button might have a blue background color and white text. But when you hover your mouse over top of the button, the background turns light blue. If you would use the tab key on your keyboard to cycle through all the page elements, once you reach the button, the state will become focus and the outline will turn red. When I would actually click and hold the button, the background will change to dark green. CSS inheritance is a mechanism that allows properties defined on parent elements to be inherited by their child elements. When a property is set on a parent element, its value is automatically inherited by its descendants unless overridden. Inheritance applies to various CSS properties such as font styles, text colors, and some layout properties. For example, if you set the font family or font size on a parent element, the child elements within it will inherit those values unless explicitly specified otherwise. In some cases, certain properties are not inherited by default. For instance, properties like background color, border properties, and box model properties are typically not inherited. In those cases, child elements will not inherit the values from their parent elements unless explicitly set. CSS inheritance simplifies the styling process by allowing you to set properties once on parent elements, reducing the need for repetitive styling on child elements. However, it's essential to be aware of which properties are inherited and which ones are not to ensure the desired styling outcome. This code creates a parent style that sets the font and font color. I also create a second style that will apply to paragraphs within the HTML but this second style is also a child of the parent. The HTML exists within a div tag that uses the id equals attribute to adopt the parent style. There are two lines of text, one inside the p tag and one outside. Let's see how that'll work. Both those lines of text are printed in blue, which means that the child element has indeed adopted the parent's values but it's also got its own larger font formatting. This kind of formatting can be powerful when you want to very precisely control overall global behavior while maintaining the ability to further define individual elements. To prevent inheritance and establish a completely new value, the inherit keyword can be used to override the inherited value. Additionally, the initial keyword can be used to reset a property to its default value. One more important point that's particularly relevant when you're working with multiple CSS styles. What happens when between your inline CSS, multiple standalone CSS files, and layers of parents and children, there's a conflict between styles? Well, there's a set of rules that determine how everything will be handled. 
inline code within an HTML file's style tags always come first. The more specific a selector is, the greater its priority. The further down in the code a style appears, the greater priority it's given, and the important attribute will always win.